Welcome to the Inferno Cast. Today I'm here with my friend Hanato Migliasso. He uh, has a bunch of schools and an amazing story. How's everything going with you today? Doing, doing great, doing amazing. How about All right, you? man. Yeah, we're, we're making do, right? We're, we're figuring it out. Um, you know, we got to meet several years ago in, in Vegas at one of the super shows. And, you know, I mean, that's been several years ago. And we've, we've had a lot of fun, a lot of conversations over the years. And so today I just wanted everybody to kind of get to know some of your background and history because a lot of people don't know, you know, that your, your background was really established in judo first. So I was going to kind of see if maybe you would uh, tell us how you found judo and, and how that happened when you were a kid back in Brazil. Yeah, I remember. It's funny because, uh, you, know, my, my brother, you know, my brother passed, but I remember him coming with a, with a, with a judo gi, right, and, and uh, giving to me. I never seen something like that. Okay. Try it out. I said, "Why? Because you're going to going to try judo today." And he did a little bit. He had stopped by then, but I think he went up to green belt. And yeah, so that that's pretty much it. It wasn't a choice of mine. So I think they were just playing a family plan and uh, put me in judo. And then uh, next thing you know, you know, I was doing, uh, you know, for, and I liked it. So I was doing for for a very good time. I'd say, let's say I started when I was about seven to eight years old, uh, and I I can't say I stopped right, it's just, but I, I started my transition to jiu jitsu around when I was twenty six, when years old, when I really was doing more. So, so you did judo for like fifteen years before even doing jiu jitsu. Uh, no, I did jiu-jitsu, uh, I would say my first time in jiu-jitsu was in, when I was 17 to 18, 10 years later. Oh, okay, okay. As, oh, okay, okay, so about 10 years of judo. Yeah, but I was still training a lot judo. I would say when I was 26, when I wasn't training that much, just judo, specifically judo class. Yeah. I just did uh, jiu-jitsu because... So how did you get introduced to the jiu-jitsu when you were playing the judo? Was I mean, was it natural just because of the nawaza and the groundwork and the other guys were training? Or was yeah. it something you seeked out? I think it's something... It, 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 I think it naturally happened inside of me, myself. It's my, my personality. I just liked the nawaza. And a lot of people... In, in judo, they don't train that because, you know, there is not much time to do it in doing yeah. the fight. So they train what's more appropriate to, to the competition. But I always yeah. liked it, right? So I always like martial arts in general. I always study, study, you know, I have a bunch of books of karate. I like this uh, Kyokushin karate. I follow a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And then I, yeah, I, I, that's kind of dream. I want to train a little bit to that. So I just like, you know, did some Kali, even in the, in the super show. And uh, yeah, you know, all the, all the martial arts I like. So in, in a sense of, uh, because to be complete, you know, to every martial arts, they have their own, uh, uh, let's say intake and, you know, philosophy. And then you always can get complete. And I said, why that's what I thought, right? Probably, but why I would not train Nawaza? Mm -hmm. So I started training Nawaza. My Nawaza was pretty good in judo compared to the people that I train with. And when I go off, and then when I compete, I finished a lot of matches on, you know, on the ground. Uh, and then I say, you know what? If they said this jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu is actually better, you know, I will go, I will see how it is, you know, I will check it out. And yes, it's true. I went there and from the guard, because there is not much guard in Jiu-Jitsu, right? In, in, in Judo. So in Judo, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is not much guard. And once you stay in the guard there, the guy, they give you three, four seconds and they stand you up and three, four seconds, maybe, maybe 10. It's yeah. not enough. It's not enough at all. Right. So I said, okay. Uh, uh, it, it, I realized that also was a different, a different game. Yeah. Later, I realized that, yes, if for, in the very, very beginning, Jiu-Jitsu can help you in Judo, Nawaza, but later on, on the next step, the next progression, actually bothers you because you don't have time. You have to train in the, the, the Nawaza in Judo in a different way. When you're taking the guy down, you already evolve into a, to a, a, how you say, a, an arm bar or a choke. It's like that's how you have to train in the transition. No, yeah, you there's know, putting, putting guard and yeah, you know, almost like a almost like a higher sense of urgency with yeah. judo. Yeah, 100%, yeah. 100%. Now, how do you feel like 
the sense of urgency from the judo, how do you feel like that translates both negatively and positively to Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Because I'm sure it can be beneficial, but sometimes it can be harmful. How do you see that it transfers in those different ways? 100%. And I believe one of the, you know, because you, you take uh, punishments a lot in judo, right? So if you know, move and, and one story, like it uh, was, was a purple belt world championship. Went to the final, was my seventh fight, okay? And I was winning up to 30 seconds when a uh, high end, he screamed to me, it's 30 seconds. It was, I was, it was a draw and I was winning by advantage, mm -hmm. okay? And, uh, and the referee touched me and said, you got to move, right? But come on, it was 30 seconds. And in jiu-jitsu, it's just stall. Just say, you know, he's not going to give me. And especially then, we didn't have much of, uh, of punishments in jiu-jitsu. Just, he just said, you got to move. And I moved, and the guy swept me, and I lost the points. I got second. So it's just because, you know, that wasn't a, yeah, one bothers the other for sure. For sure. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, so, and you got your black belt under High and Gracie, right? Yes. Yeah, how did you meet him? How did that transition happen to start training with him? So, as I was doing judo, and then uh, Gordo came into my town, okay? Is it like, is a town? Well, right now, there's a bunch of, uh, of uh, jiu-jitsu guys there. Even some guys even got uh, uh, world champions in, in an adult class. But back in you know, the adult level, uh, black belt level. But... I, Back then, it was nobody, right? So just Gordo showed up, and uh, people would rather be in, like, Sao Paulo. But a guy with a, a Gordo caliber, he showed up. I said, okay, I'm going to go there, even though I didn't know who he was, but I'm going to go there trying the jiu-jitsu that, that I've been hearing. All right, so I tried there, and but he was already in town. I just I kind of took me a while to find out that he wasn't there. So... But meanwhile, that I was training, I, I believe I trained him with him with him maybe a month or so, and he said, "I'm gonna go back to to Rio de Janeiro because uh, you know it's just, it just wasn't what he was expected." Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard. To, uh, you know, and Rio was such the hub for jujitsu back then too. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. that was just that was where it was at for jujitsu at that time. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly, and then, yeah. you know so you know get to a place start from zero have to build your students and he was still competing and uh yes i think that was 96 or 97 he yeah. he was just world champion so you know he was competing still so uh better come back i said yeah and i'm thinking i'm moving to sao paulo because that i was a, a training center for judo and then a lot of people in that training center just got invited to uh, i'm sorry just uh, a lot of people in that just how can I better, better say a lot of people from that training center makes for the Olympics in Brazil right yeah 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 I said okay I have to train there then huh? and then uh, might as well if I'm there I'm gonna train jiu-jitsu so he gave me a card and said go train with this guy and next thing you know was Hyan I didn't again I didn't know who he, who he was or so I trained with Hyan and uh, so in the mornings I trained with Hyan and in the evenings was judo so I trained twice a day in, in morning in morning jiu-jitsu and, and uh, afternoon so yeah. what was the experience like you know like with high end when you're such a high level judo player did he treat you differently or did he coach you differently for the bjj part or was it basically like yeah this is the guard here's the grips here's what we do or was it a little bit modified because of your experience in judo i would say Modified it here and there at the very, very beginning. And then I would say it was a lack of my, my uh, commitment because I was still very involved in judo and it's still like, you know, I was doing some Olympic trials and stuff and it was about a commitment. So when I got there, he goes, oh, excited. And I like, I like to compete a lot. Uh, so I was competing a lot. So he also liked people who compete and, you know, so I was going and, you know, I was, you know, winning, winning the, the tournaments. But I was mainly that time fighting judo in jiu-jitsu, right? So I was as a purple belt, you know, once you get to, you know, higher level purple belt and brown belt, then you have really to fight jiu-jitsu specific and yes. react jiu-jitsu specifically. You know, it's very hard. It, the transfer favorites you up to the purple belt, I would say, you know. Mm -hmm. 
depends on the level you had. You know, if it, some guys don't have a great level, they do judo, but they do a lot of, uh, uh, how you say, they don't do a lot of newaza, then, you know, it can get, it can get difficulties by blue belt, you know. But anyway, so how, and then he trained me, he, he was, he spent a lot of time with me. But as I, I realized that as I was a lot of times like putting more effort in judo, he slowly kind of let me go until I realized, okay, no, I, this is what I want and go back. And then he, you know, he got me, you know, brought me back in too. Cause you know, if, and then it's normal with us, right? We, we give some effort into a, a student and they shouldn't maybe wants to do something else, it's okay, it's their choice. I'm not gonna, you know, yeah. waste much of my time or his time, you know, or you know, efforts. Yeah. So yeah, so he, you know, he he always tried um because people would pull guard me, I remember this pull guard on me right away. So we used to train, he used to make me train a lot of repeat a lot of uh, techniques be, to take him down before you know people pull guard. Yeah, uh, and, and those little things to get those two points, and uh, you know, and yeah, so that was a good transition. So you're doing judo, you're doing BJJ. When did the idea of you know coming to the U.S. or traveling the world come about? What inspired that to where you were like, you know what, I'm going to take this and and go somewhere else and just expand? Yeah, I I really when I moved to, to Sao Paulo, right? So I was living, I born in Sao Paulo, I born in Sao Paulo, but I moved to this town, Ribeirão Preto, it's called the town. And you know, it's it's just more back then, you know, you know, wasn't much internet. Now it's just, it's just right, but back then wasn't much internet. You know, people just live their towns, more like a countryside, and you know, just don't have much aspirations, and you know, are willing to go other countries, or you know, they just they just live their lives, you know. And then um, when I when I moved to Sao Paulo, many of the friends they you know they go compete. They were competing in the Pan American Jiu Jitsu. They were oh man, I go oh man I wanna I wanna go one day you know do this. And then in the judo place, they all the time going to Japan and Europe and you know. And then you can tell when they come back, they come back, they come back with a huge knowledge you know and experience you know competing and fighting against other people. And I said, okay. And every time you stay behind, and, and all right, so I have to just save the money for food. That's all. And all the other money is going to be for traveling and competing. And you know, that's that's how it's going to be going from now on. You know, and that's it. And then eventually, I came to United States. What year was that? Was that 03? There was 03. 03? No, it's yeah, 03. 19, yeah. 19, 2003. Yes, 03. Yeah. So uh, I came uh, Pan American, and I remember. So I mean, we still had the, uh, I say, uh, the payphone, right? So I went to the payphone and called my 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 family, and oh, how was in there, and, you know? But wasn't my first, uh, 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 let's say, my first uh, international trip. My first international was in 1999. It was to Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. Uh, but I got I, I called them, but Japan didn't impact much as as US impacted. And then I, I called my family and said, oh man, I wanna live here one day, hopefully. <laughs> I was talking actually with my sister. But, but they took me to this place called Pacific Palisades in California. Yeah, it's beautiful, right? So it's just, I thought all, the whole country was like that. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That is not such a thing, right? It's not, not, no. not all places are like that. Not, anyway, so um, and then uh, and then I, as I was competing, Alberto Crane, you know, uh, he I'm actually me. talking to Alberto tomorrow. Oh yeah, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Tell him that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he invited me to uh, to come to his place in New Mexico. And then pretty much the, the, the rest is, is history, right? So I met, uh, I stayed with him because I met him in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he let me stay with one of his students and the student spoke no, none of Portuguese because Alberto used to, you know, he speaks, he speaks, you know. So, um, but I, with me and him there, he was speaking, we were speaking Portuguese all the time. So it's no good. So he put me with a friend. And then my English just caught up, and uh, yeah, great, great guy too helped me a lot. Tate Fletcher, now he's on the movies and doing a lot of stuff. And yeah. oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, 
Well, now, didn't that relationship kind of turn into some opportunities with some Hollywood? Because you've actually worked with some movies and done some work in Hollywood, haven't you? Yes, I did. I helped. I helped some of the guys who did the the, the what is it, John Wick? You yeah. Know, so, yeah, they stunt team. You know. I what helped. was that experience like? Was it? I mean, was it pretty cool to kind of get creative and? Yeah, this because because sometimes we we know the techniques, but we don't we don't. I think it's knowing the techniques is one thing, and and uh, and putting a perspective of a, of a choreography is a whole different story, you know, and put some punches too. But and then gets back to that thing that I always liked, right? I always like all the martial arts, and you know, somebody comes with a stick, a block, and you know, sometimes like fancy things that. We in the jiu-jitsu gonna say, ah, oh, that this doesn't work, but works perfectly for the for the camera, you know, and and for the movies in, in, in a sense, and um, and and that all brought back all the to me again the, all the the willing to learn all the martial arts, and the guys are you know they are they are amazing. I mean, they are not in the to a com- competitive level. I mean, because that's not what they focus on. Because if they would, they of course they would be good. But they're so athletic. They can do. They do parkour. They do, uh, and the trampoline. It's crazy the stuff that they do. They do that tricking too, right? And they, I can't. I can't do that stuff. They're so athletic, and anything that you teach them, you know, is truly is a fifteen seconds to learn learn process, and they get it. And next really, thing, yeah. so they just absorb it that fast. Yeah. So you've worked but, on a couple of different yeah. films as a choreographer, right? Yes, I helped them out, you know, on the choreography, you know, because what they do, they train a lot, you know, uh, uh, and then they have their own choreographer, but and then some techniques, the guy said, okay, what technique can we put here? What, what can you tell? And then, you know, that's when I can, I come out or all the guys, you know, they have other guys too. And, yeah. you know, when I come out and say, okay, maybe, you know, uh, like a Tomoe Nagi could be, uh, you know, anything else could be, right? So it's just, uh, yeah. yeah. That's uh, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, and as you know, I mean, working with the movies, you know, it's fun, it's cool, but I'm sure at a certain point, it, you know, it becomes work as well, where it's all like, hey, I got to go do this thing. and. You know. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I can tell that many of them were, uh, I would say, uh, many of them were in the, they go out and they stay three, four months out. They go to India. They go to China, Thailand. You know, to to you know, for the for the for the, for the movie and and uh, yeah, and that's what that's what happens. You know, so the, I I can't do that stuff, right? So that's why I never got too much engaged in that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Because well, I mean, because you have some schools uh, in the U.S. now, correct? Yes, two yeah. two yeah, two gyms. schools. And, uh, and then, of course, now you've got affiliates uh, over in Europe. And so I was just going to kind of discuss that a little bit about, you know, you come to America, you get established, you know, what encouraged you to go to Europe? What, where did that kind of come from as far as spreading jiu-jitsu? Well, uh, when I came to America in 2003, was, was, uh, I wasn't much, I would say, uh, uh, I didn't. I couldn't live here, right? So I came and I stayed with with Alberto. I practiced my English, trained at his gym, and came back. You know, and then it was just kind of that back and forth thing, you know. But uh, can can make a living as you get older. Couldn't make a living, and then uh, when they it got to a moment that I had to renew my visa, they didn't let me uh renew the visa and then i said okay i can't go to united states and then i was hard in, in brazil and many of the competitions start got kind of shifting to the, the this way and the mma and you know although mma started in brazil but back then was more towards the pride not much of uh the how you say um uh money right and here's you could you know back then i remember fighting here for 300 bucks and <laughs> it's still the same. You yeah, ask Alberto for three hundred bucks. Ask Alberto. He said he he on his podcast. He asked me. Uh, remember that you have to lie to high, and I had to lie to high because you would be upset. And you know, a black belt fine for three hundred bucks. But back in Brazil, we fight for the pride. Of course, the pride is way more <laughs> expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyways, uh, you know, we fight for free there, right? But I had to say no, no. They give me like fifteen hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. I don't remember. I said like. It's, seven times more what it was you know 
Yeah. So I got it. And then, um, yeah, so the next thing, you know, uh, so yes, the competitions were mainly here in the United States, starting like MMA wise. And then when I, I wanted, again, because I liked the martial arts, I was doing box, doing uh, Muay Thai, and you know, I like to, so I like to experience. And I truly believe that it's important to a, a Jiu Jitsu guy to do some MMA so he can understand how good can be his Jiu Jitsu or at least know how to apply Jiu Jitsu in a situation that people. You know, yeah, a lot of people. Um... You know, a lot of people don't even know that you fought MMA because, I mean, you fought like six or seven times. I mean, and you, you had a solid record. I think you only had one loss. Yeah. In yeah. MMA. Um, so you had a stint where you were fighting regularly and competing and doing well. What did it feel like the difference was between competing MMA and BJJ? Like, did you prefer one? Was one your favorite or was it kind of the same? What was your thoughts on the different competitions? Truly – Truly, one of the things that made me stop uh, uh, jiu-jitsu, uh, jiu-jitsu, no, uh, MMA, I wanted to do MMA because it was a trend. It was a trend, but also, uh, you know, the whole thing of the, the new martial arts. Why not doing this? Because, you know, I, I'm liking it. You know, we were not making money. We were well, not much money around. I think the first, the best one that I made was like four or 5,000. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, wasn't much. And... Um, uh, so the, the, but I never like much the environment, you know. It's all like, like they hate each other, and you know, and it's just, just crazy. I, martial arts not supposed to be like that, yeah. and, you know. So I I remember going to some of the fights. I go there and I hate that I have to go and weigh in because I have to meet all these guys, and then I'll, I go back and go back in a, in a hotel. Maybe change. I don't know. I just not you know. But I mean, back. Hey, you know, there's a lot of martial artists out there that have been migrating from MMA a, a lot because of that factor, you know, because it's like the representation of it during the weigh-ins and, you know, and, and the fights and stuff it is, it's so much more entertainment focused and a lot of martial artists feel like it's kind of lost the martial arts feel and they just don't like it. You know, they like going to a grappling jujitsu tournament where, you know, it's like, even if your competitors you know, there's a mutual respect and, you know, and it's, you know, there's still, it gets tense at times, but compared to the MMA scene, you know, cause I know exactly what you're talking about of just the tension and the attitudes and, and kind of the facade that, that surrounds it. And, and a lot of times you're dealing with an athletic commission and they're not, you know, they're not very educated on mixed martial arts or, you know, they don't have very good personality skills of dealing with athletes. And, you know, you just feel kind of, you know, mistreated. You're just like, man, why am I even doing this? This isn't fun. These people are difficult to deal with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when, you know, it started not being fun again. And, you know, jiu-jitsu is just fun. It's relaxed. You go there, you fight, you know. You just, you know, of course, that I, you know, when you were younger, that I had a lot of tension too, you know. You, yeah. you kind of hate the other guy. But, you know, <laughs> later when you, when you get older, you understand that guy that I fought, too many times actually because of him I got better right because I didn't want to lose you know to him. so I started training harder and hard so at the end of the day this guy what made me better and, and it was just, so we appreciate people yeah. yeah I'm sure an MMA will go that way but that is always that trend of, of, of you know selling entertainment and talk you know talk trash trash talk and it's uh, that you know it's just it's not my thing you know it's not like 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 you said you know i, I did mma but i don't say i don't talk it's just it's not my thing it's just maybe i would maybe i would or should but because you know to to how i say uh uh maybe be more profitable right or be more out there right i don't, I don't know. know i don't know maybe yeah, I don't know. Be more out there more and more advertising more of myself but uh, i just that's okay i just don't don't yeah. care you know? well, my, I mean, mma is just in my gym, there is not a single picture of myself with a, it's just, you know, I mean, not saying bad with whoever decides to do that, but mine is just, you know, it's, it's just a gym. It wasn't your path. I understand. Yeah. 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 But the yeah. fact that you have that experience, I think is valuable because as a coach and a mentor, you know, it's good to have those experiences to pass on because, <clears throat> you know, just me knowing you and us being friends, like I know you would never pass on the bias. You know, you would never be trying to talk somebody out of MMA. You know, but you could educate them, be like, well, here's what happened with me. Here's what I learned when I was competing and fighting, you know, but so it's good for your background as an educator. Um, but, you know, you, you wouldn't deter somebody from going that path because it, it's successful for a lot of guys. A lot of people enjoy it. 
I always really enjoyed MMA. Um, you know, I liked that competition style and sometimes the environment outside of the competition time was difficult to deal with at times, but when it came time to get in there, like that was always my favorite part. Alone, yes, the fighting itself, I love it. And I just can't, can't, not even one single complaint. The whole, you know, all the stuff beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. The paperwork and the physicals and all that, and sitting in a back room with a bunch of pallets and junk and, you know, yeah. walking around on concrete and warming up with all this stuff around you. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. stuff wasn't much fun. It was. Uh, uh, so when you ended up in Europe, where were, where did you end up first? First, so I went to Portugal. So that was the thing. So since I didn't have much, uh, I didn't have how to, because when they denied my visa, I didn't, uh, I went to Portugal because of the Europeans. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right? So, yeah. And as I'm in there, so I start meeting a lot of people and, you know, I just I always like be outgoing and, and talk to people. And you know, it's, it's funny because it's a bit, it's not supposed to be like that, but people like after we talk, they go, oh, but what belt are you? And then I go, uh, I'm black belt. And they go, oh my God, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and you're, you know, kind of nice. <laughs> I mean, of course, that's, that's different right now. There are many people black belts now. But anyway, so uh, 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 start meeting with people and they go, oh, how about if you come to my gym and, and, and do, a, do a seminar? How long are you going to be in Europe? I, I remember that day I said, I don't even know when I'm going to come back. I'm just going to stay here three months, whatever. And so I went to England. I went to France. I went to Germany, uh, Switzerland. And yes, I think it was That's awesome. those, four, those four countries that time. Yeah. So how did you navigate like the language and just the logistics? I mean, because you've been to America, you know, uh -huh. you've been to Japan. You don't have like a support structure. You know, you don't have any... Like, how did you just make it through all these countries and connect the dots and figure out what to do, what not to do? Uh, that's a funny story. It's uh, uh, at the Pan Americans, right? So, like, we we came, we, we bought. That's a, a typical thing in Brazil. You buy the the, the stuff. Can you finance, right? Here, of course, here we have too, but it's everything there in Brazil, people finance, they give you checks and then you deposit every month, right? Sometimes the checks bounce and stuff. But anyway, so I bought the ticket to come to the United States. I don't even have money to pay back. So what, what I did, I got some people, they, you know, they sponsored me, they sponsored that they gave me geese. And so I brought a bunch of geese and I sold them all in, uh, in front of the Pan America. I stayed in, imagine a, in, in the pyramid, but, but back then was, it was in Santa Barbara, you know, uh, 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 university, but I stayed in front of the, the entrance and then put the stuff on the floor. What do you want to buy? Right? So these guys buying stuff for me and I made a good solid money. And then in Portugal was exactly the same thing. And that's why these people come to talk to me too. Right. And I met some people and it was just there. And, uh, uh, well, I spoke English and many of them spoke English too. Yeah. And then from there, as I, as I go to one place, I teach a class. If they like it, you know, they hey, I have a friend. And then, and then that's how I start. And many of, the, of them were just places, like a small group of, of people, like, you know, five, six guys, you know, 10 guys tops, and they're just starting. Well, yeah. especially in those days, I mean, because jiu-jitsu is just not all over the world just yet. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, for you to, to have the foresight, you know, because a lot of people would have run into the struggle where my visa got denied. I'm just going to go back to Brazil and wait for my visa to get accepted. But yeah. you were creative and you were like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the other half of the world and yeah. I'll just spread jujitsu there, you know, because now you have a lot of affiliate schools over in that area where you have a major, you know, influential umbrella over um, in Europe now that you set up, you know, almost 20 years ago that, yeah. You know, I just that says a lot about your character, um, and that's one thing that I've always really appreciated uh, about our friendship is just kind of talking through the strategies and the structures, whether it's jujitsu strategy and structure, or if it's business or just life. Because you just you're such a chess player of like three moves ahead, or like down the road this will happen or that'll happen. Just a real analytical mind, which makes sense because I mean you're a great coach and a great competitor, so. You know, do you think that martial arts inspired that type of thinking in you? Or do you feel like you were attracted to martial arts because you think that way? I would say right now, like kind of back and forth. But, but yes, I, I, I would say mainly martial arts inspired, inspired me to be that way, truly. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. Kind of pulled it out of you. It's and a I struggle, think, right? It's a, you know, that I'm, I mean, every martial arts are, are, are good and great and all of them are, how you say, effective. The only thing is the way they're being taught and, you know, people cutting stuff and because of the sport and the rules, so they start cutting stuff. And then, and then with the years, people not even understand why they do this stuff. Like say, for example, for katas, they, they, they have a, a meaning, right? They, they must have, right? But then because you, now you just do the katas and not even understand, nobody explains to you why you do this kata. And then, and the next thing you know, it's just, you know, you assume that it's that, that way and then you don't see the transferring in, in, to real life, right? And then back to that transference principle. You know, I always tell people, I'm like, man, Kata's was videotape from like 3,000 years ago. Because, you know, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't have anything. You're teaching a, box, a bunch of six-year-old kids how to do movements. Like, you got to come up with something to get those kids to pay attention and to follow the structures for the yeah. muscle memory. And then yeah. as they get older transfer that muscle memory into something functional because you know like me and drink talked about it uh a couple weeks ago about you know used to when you learn martial arts you, you started at a young age and you just needed to be good at it at, by the time you're a teenager so you could kind of protect the village you know or serve the military there wasn't this competitive measurement like every three months or six months like oh how good am i compared to that kid that's been training six months you know like that was a that was a newer thing that came later where when you think ancient times, it's like, look, you start training as a kid. By the time you're 16, you need to be able to fight to protect the family or the village or whatever thousands of years ago. And then over time, as things change, like you said, it just it can get convoluted or, you know, misrepresented. But but I'm with you. I just love martial arts all around. Um, yeah. And, then, and with that said, is this, any martial arts, they struggle, right? It's a struggle. It's not easy to get beat up when somebody's boxing you. It's not easy, you know, to get kicked on the legs. It's not easy to get choked. And people, you know, wrestling is not easy. All this, you know, it's, it's not easy. So, I mean, you just become, a, 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 let's say, a natural fighter, you know. It's, um, I would say, it's, um, um, there is a book. I, I didn't buy it. I was looking in the Amazon and this is, it's something about wrestling. And then as I, I was reading, uh, you know, a little bit of the book, the guy said, I didn't, I didn't get to be a champion. I didn't uh, uh, make it. I didn't have a good uh, uh, how say record when I finished my high school. But I still consider myself a, uh, a wrestler because of, you know, of the, everything that I learned in wrestling and I've shaped my, uh, shaped my, uh, personality. And that's why, you know, it's a lifestyle, right? So, yeah. uh, right. And then, and then right. the same with all martial arts. Sorry. Yeah. Good yeah, no, no, I, I, I see exactly. What it's like, it's an identity that imprints upon you and that's how you approach the rest of your life, you know, which, which leads to a good topic because, you know, what parts of martial arts do you feel like impacted you the most that have changed who you are for the better? You know, um, what, what pieces do you think really reshaped your value system or your moral compass for the better? Uh, I would say, I would say for sure competition, you know, the competition part, uh, because again of the, of the struggle, right? If you train, if you train right now i'm just in a different part i'm trying to learn how to train without focus on competition you know so it's just uh, because now it's part of the life which many people are doing or, or many of my students can actually teach me right in that sense because you know they don't they they don't do this for the competition i did for the competition because they come because of the competition you would have like you would get better and have better opportunities and you have to compete you know to you have to otherwise you wouldn't would, that was my you know my life my my struggle and because of that you know you were you're let's say you were hurt you still have to do it you were sick you still have to do it and uh and that struggle for sure you know changed uh you know, shaped my, 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 my personality, right? Yeah. Uh, could, could have been the, another way? Yes, for sure. Could have been another way. But uh, at that moment, what was available to me was, was the competition, you know, for sure could be other, other things, you know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking some time to talk to me today. And, you know, hopefully whenever things smooths out, we'll get to 
hang out and do some training again. And for sure, for sure, yep. And if there's everything you ever need, buddy, you just let me know, and, and I'll do what I can for you. Definitely. And then, uh, one more time, I just want to say that I appreciate you. You're always, you know, always nice, always, you know, from the day one, always uh, eager to talk, to, you know, uh, and share uh, ideas and, and, and experiences, okay? It's just, and then that's a true martial, martial artist right there, you know? So that's, uh, that's uh, the, what we need more in, the, in, the, in our, uh, our industry. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, buddy. I hope everything's good with you and the family, and we'll be talking to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you.